This podcast is brought to you by JAM, Junction Arts and Media, building community in the Upper Valley through media. Okay, so we're Screaming in the Darkness, we're a, a, a comedy show, and we're a truth-telling show, and truth is the best comedy. Before we go into you know the update with David Vincelette, which everyone is dying to wait to dying to you I know at home you're dying. There are women, there are millions of women around the world just you know laying in bed alone wearing a negligee and they are just wondering and fantasizing and dreaming about what is going on with the conflict between the town of Hanover, David Vincelette, and Dartmouth College concerning environmental pollution and abuses of Dave's civil rights. Not only mine, but actually. (laughs) 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 The part surprised me too. (laughs) But it's a nice idea. Dave, people. But Marcus was, his mobile home is parked on my property, so when they locked us in the property, they locked him in the property. Well, we Two, can't, we can't. 25 months. Marcus has pulled out a guitar, and uh, Dave, this is the portion of the show. As always, we are going to have the moment of our show, which is the funniest portion of our show, and the most dramatic, and the most climatic, and the most exciting. It's when David Vincelette talks about the update on his life aka his 30-year battle with dartmouth college in the town of hanover for polluting the water and by the way they did pollute the water 30 years they were dumping parking lot and (laughs) asphalt in 20 over 20 dave is famous dave did stop the environmental pollution that dartmouth college and the town of hanover were colluding and tearing up parking lots, dumping them on dirt roads, washing into the brook. Parking lots debris was washing into the brook. Dave reported it many, many decades ago. They wouldn't listen to him. They tried to silence him. And eventually, after years and years, that he, he wouldn't stop, and they eventually he got them to stop. The town has now stopped dumping asphalt waste into the brook because of Dave. So our water is clean. The main brook in our town, the main water source running through our town is clean because of David's work. Ladies and gentlemen, David Vincelette. Wow, it's such a buildup. So Dave, uh, what's going on? How are you doing? How is your nature homestead church? And how is are things going in your world? Well, I've, I settled in, in Hanover along the brook years ago, 40 years ago. And it's always been a source of uh, inspiration to me and to the people who come down to the shantytown to jump in the brook and splash around and sharing God's gifts. The fact that they started polluting the water upset me, especially since I was raising a family. But what what upset me even more was then they fenced us in to the property, holding us hostage for twenty five and a half months. Let's let's um, give a little update on that. The town did erect a metal fence on the border between their land and Dave's land because Dave was collecting things from the dump. And by collecting, I mean cons- taking large amounts of things, debris. Dave's place looks like a... No debris. Not debris, just items, metal, wood, f- things that you could use, gadgets, things. It's hard to explain. Shandy. D- D- Dave lives in a dump it's not paradise. really nice paradise. Dave lives in a, on a, on a nature paradise, but he surrounded his house with like a, a, it's like a transfer station. He collects stuff rather than going to the landfill. So there's a pile of baseball bats and a pile of bikes and a pile of everything you could possibly name. There's huge metal scaffolding and there's, and there's endless 
valves and pipes and Pile tools. And the, and the town did not appreciate it. What? And Pile of a grateful ship. Yeah. Yeah. And and the, and so some of this stuff did go onto the town property, and and people were getting upset. Yeah, it was. I had some stuff along my driveway that legally was the right of way through the town property. And so they asked. They kept asking Dave, move. Dave, move your stuff off our property. It's spilling onto our property. Move it off our property. And I wasn't fast enough. And Dave would say, hey, well, stop polluting the brook. And, uh, you, you know, and, um, and then I'll do it. But anyway. But anyway, they put a fence around us and held us for tw 25 and a half months. And it's a federal crime. You can't hold hold people without a they driveway. They put a fence around Dave's property and they accidentally... They accidentally co covered my driveway put it and my across fire lane. His driveway. Which makes no difference whether it was accidental or on purpose. The and problem is it was a violation of our co my and constitutional rights. And Dave could have easily just clipped it with a freaking metal... Could have clipped it, but I was told by the police chief that I would be arrested and I had enough, enough on my plate without facing arrest and being hard, carted off to jail. I... A wife and two dogs, and uh, I had a bunch of homeless people I was taking care of. That always helps so the cause. I, I couldn't, I couldn't really just go off to jail. Couldn't afford to. The town p took offense, and they built it right around Dave's property. That's how scared they are of Dave. And it's funny because Dave is the nicest guy in the world, the funniest guy in the world, second, ama second amazing best. human being. But the town is horrified with them. There's literally a police guard that is sent to the monthly town meetings every month to, to watch Dave and stand behind Dave. It's exciting. Because they're scared of what he might do. They're scared of what he might do. They're scared that he keeps coming to town meetings and complaining about things going on in the town. And so now they hire a police officer. And they've and if and with Dave talks for more than well, five minutes, they arrest him. He's been arrested, was arrested at least three times. Three times, yeah. He's been to see judges. So this is a guy who I mean, can you imagine this? There's no one very few people go to these town meetings. They're always, you know, basically empty. Dave goes every month he speaks, and every time he goes, you play the gamble. Is he gonna go, you know, get handcuffed and go to jail for speaking more than five minutes? <laughs> Wait, Dave, so they, they put a fence up. They didn't know what they They made a mistake. They put a fence around your, your property. Yeah, but I went to them for 25. Okay, so after so after two, it took them a long time, 25 months, whatever, two it years. Took, it took a judge to, to rule for them. To, okay, so. So then they took the fence down from so my driveway. So they took the fence down. Just only they took it down by my driveway, not the whole well, fence. It's right, it's right for, it's okay for them to have okay, a fence on their property. That it was his driveway. Or however long it took. Yeah. I mean, a town put a fence on your driveway. It took two years to figure it out. And then they said, okay, we... we well, during the two years... They didn't know it was your driveway. And, and to be honest, yeah. you didn't really put a car there anyway. Well, the and it thing. wasn't really... Here's the thing. Anyway. Yeah. In the two years that yeah. th they held us, they took the land next to my house. They said, I, I, couldn't re I couldn't afford to pay my taxes. Well... Well, the reason I couldn't pay my taxes is that they cut they cut my dri driveway off. I had no rental. I couldn't rent out any rooms in my house because they shut the driveway. And then I went, so I was trying to raise money to pay the taxes. How do you raise money to pay the taxes when your land has been covered with a fence? Hey, I'll never forgive the town of Hanover for smashing oh, a homeless well. shelter down and to the ground. And then they smashed, they smashed the And leaving shelter. broken glass all in the forest that I've been picking up for the last couple of years. And then they cry to me that there's no... This is literally... It's hard to believe low that... Low-income housing. It's hard to believe that this actually happened, but the town of it's Hanover... It's unbelievable. Nobody knows it happened. That's what's so upsetting. There was a small... That's why I'm screaming in the darkness. Mm -hmm. There was a small little red cabin next to Dave's house who for several decades has been used to give people shelter. A lot of homeless people, sometimes Dartmouth students, sometimes Dartmouth professors, sometimes you name it, a lot of people have stayed there. Hikers yeah. on the Appalachian Trail. It was yep. a little red cabin and it was- Baltimore a, it, Jack's second home. Famous AT hiker, Baltimore Jack's second home. And it was a refuge for lots of people. This little red cabin 
that was looked over the brook. The town of Hanover, because Dave couldn't pay his taxes, took ownership of the land and then came down there with a bunch of guys in machines and smashed the I cabin had, I had three to the years ground. Under state law, I had three years to buy the property back, pay the taxes. But instead, <laughs> they came down and smashed everything. <coughs> three they, buildings. And they literally smashed it. We're like, I'm like, who would? There was, there's glass. It's in, a play, it's in the middle of the forest on the brook. And there's glass everywhere. Everywhere. There's just, there's like, we need to demolish it. It's, and so that was a move that we are going to need to, you know, it's, sometimes I'm like, you know, Dave, Dave, come on. But I'm like, you know what? It, no, because it, it's not the first time the town of Hanover smashed down one of Dave's buildings that was on his land. They've actually done it before. And they've done it before that, too. <laughs> <laughs> there is you a house, house in Hanover. They call Rock and roll, baby! <laughs> Woo! That was great. This is Screaming in the Darkness with Dave, Ryan, and Marcus. We needed Marcus. He is essential. Hey. Okay. Um, yeah, that's it. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, Dave, you were saying, yeah. So you've been through all these things. The fence is the fence got is up. They tore down your so place. They tore down your other house. They've taken, you've had a lot of land that you've owned with homes on it that you couldn't pay the property taxes. They and took they, them all. They and took they them all. They smashed all the them homes, all down. All of them. But a lot of reason you couldn't. And I talked to yeah. a building inspector and I said, why did they, why, why did those, they tear those buildings down? And he said, they never consulted me. They yeah, never they never even asked their own building inspector. Hey, look, to, to, to Dave isn't a, d hey, they were, they were scared of Dave. He wasn't, he wasn't, uh, it's not the most, and so, hey Dave, that's why you don't have friends, by the way. That's why I don't have friends? That's what, ha that's what happens when you don't have friends, like a, a big group and a big support group. Yeah. If you had like a, enough people around you with a little, a little bit of a, a network, and it's like, there would be enough people that, that, that you wouldn't be, that would have relationships with people who work for the town, so it'd be very hard for them to do things that were very, you know, negative. Yeah. It's like you're you live in Maybe a bubble. So, it shouldn't it shouldn't be that way. That's true. They shouldn't they shouldn't they shouldn't not violate you just because they are friends with your friend. But that's how the world works to a degree. So but they what happened was they took me to court for living in my house because they put zoning on it that it could only be lived in half a year seasonally. And when I beat them in court, they just got a bad, put a bad taste in their mouth, and they had a tried to screw with me for thirty years. After that, they just had a considered me a, a danger to the town. Hey, Dave, what about forgetting? You a dink. 
A dink. Yeah. Hey. You're, you're trouble. You're doing nothing but trouble. Exactly. Yeah, nothing but trouble. Hey, Dave. What about forgetting the whole thing and just focus on things that you like to do for fun? Well, here's the thing. For five years, I had five years to file a lawsuit, and that fi- that time is has has gone. Uh oh, whoopsie! So I, so I have to think of a new line of attack. The new line of attack should just be First uh, Amendment violation, I think. But why are you fighting? What are you fighting? I'm fighting why? to get my land back and my oh and, and my property back that they took. So they offer you the opportunity to pay your taxes back. To get it back? Yeah, they oh. offered me that. Well, the first thing you should do for that yeah. is you need to write up a one-page description of what you're asking for, and then you need to get a, some s- signatures on it yep. from people, just like that's what you need to do. Yep, petition. You need to start there. Yep. It's a great place to start. My dad told me, people go, what, 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 what do we start? Yeah. What do we start? It's like, yo, start with a petition because yeah, it forces you to go, gonna help hey, you with that. Hey, hey, I'm David Vincelette. Here's my story. Here's the land I own. Here's what happened on that land. Here's what I want. Yep. This is what I think is right. And then you get people to sign it, and then you present it. And you say, and you keep saying, I'm asking for this. Yep. Yeah. Let's start there. Let's start there, and then we, up- we can update the listeners on what happens with the petition. That'll be the new thing. What's the update with Dave's petition? That gives Dave an action plan. It's going to be one page written. But maybe you could find, is there anything, you, can, you, you probably, you can probably find something to sue them for that's, that has, a, that has, that has, a, that has a statute of limitations that's somehow longer. Yeah, First Amendment violations, I think, for what they've done to the brook and to my, to silencing me at these, arresting me and a, Ooh, a First Amendment, see, what's that? what's what's separate though, isn't it, from... Your yep. whole situation with your taxes and your property. That's separate. Yeah. So the, right. which started first? Well, the thing is that the recent violations with my First Amendment by arresting me, that was, that's definitely not. Well, I'm talking about but no, no, your no. first property that was bulldozed down. Yeah. That. So the so the whole, <clears throat> the, the water thing, all that pollution shit, you're talking about was, was that going on before that property was taken down? Yes. Yeah. In fact, one we, led we to the in, other. I we was were in court about it at the time, they, and they they took it. They actually told me they were going to take it down on such and such a date, so that I thought I had a chance to recoup it with the court. But then I, they called me into their office and they said, "Dave, we want to tell you we tore down your house the other day." So, so they actually tricked me into thinking that I had more time than, than I had. They didn't want me to show up. At that the, is really evil. They had really, wanted, e- really evil to do this. Really <laughs> evil to, to. It's like yeah. Oh, it's like, oh hey, hey, those are the rules. If you don't pay your property tax in three years, if it's like, hey man, this is someone who's like complaining about this. Like you're gonna tear his house down. Yeah. This is someone who lives so, here, has had two daughters go to high school here and go to the school system here and has paid his taxes for like many taxes, years. A lot of taxes. And so it's not like here's someone trying to cheat on his taxes. <laughs> Let's do what we do. Hey, if you don't pay your taxes for three years, we bulldoze your house to the ground. It was such a mean thing to do. Such a mean, such, such a like, oh, well, the, here's what the law says, so we can do it. Such, such a by the book thing that's like, I don't yeah. care what the book says. Yeah, everything right. It's his home. You can't bulldoze it to the ground. And yeah. to do it early so that I could protect my property. And, and, and everything looks a disgrace for the town of Hanover, and he hasn't paid his taxes. This is time to get rid of his shit. Come on, let's, yeah. we're done with it. They had, they had, they wanted to, they were after me on that property, and this was just an excuse to over and clean it all up. Oh, because they thought your property, yeah, because you had a bunch of stuff that they thought it was a mess. I, I had some timber frame buildings yeah. that I had disassembled and had all stacked there. They were, they were pretty valuable. All kinds of antique wood and stuff. This is the house in Etna right on the road? Yeah. I had 10 big steel beams that were 35 feet long each from when they remodeled the Interstate 89. <laughs> I bought them. And you left them on the side of the they road? Were, they were on... They were on 
Yeah, they run the city. Right. Oh my, oh for no God. reason, for no reason. All that's taxpayer money that the town used to tear down all this house and take all your stuff. Yeah, and they bulldozed. The house was built by a guy who collected all kinds of used materials. Think about that for a moment. Think about think. About, well, yeah, go on, go I on. Think I've thought no, just the fact that it, the fact that there's a I rule, the fact that the, we all live in a town. We go, oh, it's really nice and peaceful. It's really nice here. Everything, everyone gets along. It's like, hey, guess what? If you fall on hard times and you can't pay your property taxes for three years, they bulldoze your house to the ground. Yeah. With all your stuff inside not, of it. Yeah. Not only <laughs> I had inside the house. <laughs> that were, sounds insane. <laughs> it was insane. I, inside the house, there were $12,000 worth of chairs, an inventory of chairs that I had purchased from a manufacturer. And, and there was a, a box of my personal items. Without letting you get your stuff See, out of I've it? See, I've never even heard about anything of the other antique stuff. I just heard about his, his military uniforms. Uniforms, all, his, all my military, military uniforms stuff. were in there. That's what pissed me my off. My Class A I uniforms, ain't... my first, yeah. Everything was in there. Who ordered that? Julia Griffin? She was in, she was in the mix. Who was the town manager at the time? Very Julia very Griffin. Very... Oh my God. It's hard to, when you really think about it, it's hard to imagine. I know. And nobody, someone saying, we don't know what else to do. Hey, look, he's not going to pay his property taxes. Hey, look, that's the law. We own the land now. It's now your land, Julia. If you don't okay? get rid of if you don't get your shit out, we're bulldozing it. Okay, you I, just I gotta, called, really? We're going to go bulldoze the guy's house? He has stuff in it that he may want. You're not going to tell I, him first? Call, You're just going to, nope. I called bulldoze the, it all. I <laughs> called the Valley News, <laughs> and they didn't. Instead of running a story about my house being torn down, they ran a picture of a chicken coop that had caught fire. That, that kind of stung. I, I got the- That is gold. I, I hi, want a chicken hi. coop. Hi, Valley News. Hi, Valley News. The town of Hanover is bulldozing my house to the ground. All my stuff is in there, all, all my belongings, the things that I want. I, uh, sorry, sir, there was this, chicken, this girl's chicken coop's on fire. Chicken coop, it was a chicken coop on fire? That's a big deal, chickens. Eggs, they get hurt. That's it's life. To, it's hard to recoup. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Woo, woo, laying some good ones today. Boy. Boom. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> woo. Hey, so, you know, Dave, this is exciting because I got to be honest, as your friend for a while, you know, it's like, oh, Dave keeps complaining about the asphalt ways. Dave's in upset. But now it's like, you know what? It's like, no, it's like this man had his land and his houses destroyed and stolen. And he deserves it. Just because I wanted them to stop polluting my water. We are looking, if screaming in darkness, we're looking for the right attorney to take on Dave's case. We've been looking for a long time, but I'm not, I, we don't just want any attorney. We want someone who deeply cares about the environment, deeply cares about, you know, come here, get to know Dave and go, hey, this is a landmark case. This is Dartmouth College, a billion dollar endowment. This is town of Hanover, uh, New Hampshire, 45 million dollars a year budget. Vendetta. What? Need somebody that cares about my vendetta. It's more I'm than not. Dave's vendetta. It's not just me, Dave's, there's 12 Dave's people vendetta. who were hurt I by these people. Mine. Oh, your vendetta? Everybody's, anybody that's been wrongfully Abused by a town. Put it lightly. Yeah, a lot of people have been wrongfully sort of F. screwed over. Yeah, fucked. You can say the F word on this thing. That's true. Dave, yeah, what about people who say, hey, Dave, join the club? I know. What makes you special? Everyone's been screwed over by towns and stuff. I'm not, I'm not special, but I just have a desire not to see that my children are pe penalized and have their birthright stolen from these bastards. I can't, I just can't, I'm gonna fight as long as Birth I can. Right. Well, they had a right to the property that's well, been yeah, stolen from you, me. Of course, it's your property, it's gonna and, go to them. And they He's talking about his property in Aetna too. All hey. of it. Well, I want that. That's Maybe. another story. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wants. The property that was in Aetna that is not his anymore, he's referring to. You want your yeah. old land back. That's the first time I've heard you really clearly say it to me. I want my old land back. Yeah, I know well, your land. Gonna, land is it going to be the same, though? What? No. Those that, that timber frame, all that beautiful work that was there I lived in, it's gone. Yeah, yeah they, 
they destroyed some art. They, and I yeah. haven't I haven't gone back up to look because I can't I don't have the heart to see it. An empty quarter of an acre. Yeah, lot. the one the one lot had a beautiful timber frame built by a Dutch Sweet. man who he was Dutch. Yes, yeah, he was he was a cool dude, Frank van der Stock. And he uh, built this really I neat felt little lo- timber felt frame. I fell in love with that place and worked on it. Lived in it through the winter. When they lot. when they got the opportunity, there was no reason. But when they got the opportunity, they bulldozed that one, and two other buildings on the property. They booted me, at, me and my girl, out in the spring. Luckily, I went got through the winter in the spring summer. And said, if you come back here, yeah, I used to two hundred and fifty dollar a day fine for what? For being on that property after. Marcus Remember lived that there. Paper, yeah. Marcus I lived on one of Dave's properties up in the country where, it, where Dave had this little property. It was beautiful. And they, the town bulldozed that, I've too. Told you, we've talked about Dave it. Long didn't pay his property ago. taxes. You know, what you, should, you know what you could have done and should have done? What's is that? Is make them all of churches back then. Yeah, you could have said something. you could have just ma- made this. Hey, I'm Dave. I'm a, church. There was electricity. There was no running water. You should have made. And you should have. You should have. It was basically deemed season, seasonal, because of the zoning. Well, so yeah, I love that. Let's get the land back. That's great. And we're oh, we're looking for an attorney. So you find the right attorney. Wants to take on this case. Get back. Sue Dartmouth College for a couple hundred million dollars. And that's a good good word to say. For polluting the brook, what should should they not be sued? Hey Dartmouth, guess what you did for a long time with your parking lots you tore up. Not just Dartmouth, the town of Hanover, both. Of them. It's both of them. It's the town of Hanover and Dartmouth. And other people that they talked into donating but, their but, but hey, but everyone should be forgiven. Bad things go on all around the world every single day of life. Yeah, I'm not saying we don't for, forgive them. Or, but but yeah, it. let's be honest that, the, that Dartmouth, the town of Hanover, for a long period of time, were tearing up parking lots and dumping it along in, on dirt roads. It was washing into the, it was washing into the brook. It's I've not, seen it my first hand. It wasn't and just take, my water. It was the... I get it. I swim in the brook every day. Stores Pond was on. I can't believe you haven't place. sued them for. Pol- I can't believe I didn't either. I but feel like an underachiever. Hey, the time wasn't right. the time wasn't right. I prayed about it and prayed about it, and I finally just let the time lapse. I just couldn't bring myself to file. I felt hey, over- you- I was overwhelmed by it. Yep. You need you need you need a you need a you need an attorney. I need somebody who knows what. Like they're doing, but and that's what we're gonna find. That's what we're gonna find with this podcast. We're gonna find someone who's gonna who's gonna bring the famous David Vincelet lawsuit. It's gonna be great, and it's gonna bring closure to Dave's life, so he can finally sue the town, get all the land back, and then put, build some structures on that land. It's got some amazing people living there. And, Let's I, f- and I also want them to take the the fence around my, from around my property. And apologies from the people who did what they did knowingly but can't can anyone put a fence on up on their property if they want to i i guess they can but it's kind of a, an insult to have somebody coming down and put a fence all around your property yeah in the middle of the forest like it doesn't need to be there it's a, it's aggressive yeah i think we should tear it down like the berlin wall that would be let's just piece by piece remove it ourselves well, yeah i think that's a good idea i'll sell pieces of it for an art for an art exhibition somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Because as far as I'm concerned, you've heard my what I say. I just think it's a, it was a concentration camp, but I feel like evil wire. This podcast is brought to you by Jam Junction Arts and Media, building community in the Upper Valley through media.